Oasis into the City. I'm Katie Horba. Thank you so much for checking out my channel. This is part of the election series and today's episode I am featuring a candidate by the name of David Waters. Dave invited me into his very, very peaceful backyard to record our interview, which I'll share the footage with you guys in just a moment. Uh, just before we get to that, I wanted to make a little reminder. I know I've been mentioning it a lot, but I do so because I do feel that it's just very important. Uh, please continue to watch the videos, share the videos, inform yourselves on the candidates who are running, pick candidates whose issues that they're bringing to the table resonate with you, um, and get out there and vote. Your vote matters, your voice matters, and if you're not making this decision, somebody else is making it for you. So that's that's it for me. <laughs> um, without any further ado, I'm going to share with you guys the interview with one of your city councillor candidates, David Waters. So I'm here today with Dave Waters, and Dave is seeking a seat on City Council. Dave, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, uh, born in Huntsville, Ontario, but have lived in uh, Sarnia um, from a very young age. I currently work in cooperative housing at Faith and Place Housing Cooperative in Sarnia. I've done so for almost 11 years now. And before that, I spent most of my life in the hospitality industry, restaurants, hotels. Excellent. And now, before we get into the politics, yeah. let's learn a little bit about your personality. So what do you like to do on your downtime, and uh, what are some hobbies that you have? Well, this is where I like to spend my downtime. I'm sitting in my backyard. I love being outside. Uh, my wife and I like camping. Uh, just spending time in nature, really. Very nice. And why politics? Why did you choose to run this year? Do you know, uh, I wanted to run in 2014, but I just wasn't in the right position. I had to get some ducks in a row, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, um, my housing background has really brought me into politics. Um, um, over the last five years, I spent, I spent a fair bit of time at Queen's Park fighting for affordable housing in Ontario. Mm -hmm. So I just got the itch more. I um, wanted to really be involved and, and get involved more in my local community um, in politics. So just uh, wanted to, to play a bigger, bigger role. Excellent. Very cool. Yeah. Okay, and when we come back, we're going to hear more about Dave's thoughts on the current council and his thoughts about what will happen if he does get elected. you a few questions now about sure. your reflections on the present council. Okay. Uh, so overall perception on how this current council is done for the 2014-18 term. Well I think if you look at, they, they recently had, um, they put out um, their accomplishments for the four years and there was quite a bit of accomplishments there. I think but there's been so much that has kind of sh um, overshadowed that if they're, or overshadowed their successes and I think it's the conflict in the council and the mayor's office and the city administration. Mm -hmm. I think it's really kind of, um, uh, I'm going to say put a black ball or a black mark on, on anything they may have accomplished because the citizens of Sarnia have really focused on that. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think there's been a, um, a couple of things that have stood out uh, from the negative side and that of course is Centennial Park and um, you know where the original budget came in I think and where things end up it just seemed like uh, there was a lack of accountability there and someone wasn't keeping track of something. Mm -hmm. So I think overall, really, I think though, I mean, um, I think they had a solid four years. Um, I don't think our city is in, 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 by any means, in worse shape than when they started. Mm -hmm. I just think there's again a couple of issues that have really um, come to the forefront in the last number of years, and it's really has kind of set the tone for their their four years. Right, right, fair. Okay, um, so you mentioned that was kind of a black ball on the. Maybe not the best framing word, but yeah, it's definitely a black but, mark. But a mark. Yeah. Um, so what? So what are some of the things that you felt um, that they did do well? Well, again, again, without having all those numbers in, in front of me, and, and I mean, there's a lot there to to. Um, I mean, I like the introduction of the bike lanes. Of course, you're starting to see that come through the city now in different areas, and that mm -hmm. that to me is a huge, huge accomplishment. Um, I think uh, some people may differ in opinion, but I, I like to see that the the hospital site uh, has started to come down. Mm -hmm. um, it sat empty there, and I think it was just uh, an eyesore for that area that really needs to be revitalized. Um, so that decision uh, was good. Um, obviously, doing something with Centennial Park was 
initially good. Uh, and the outcome at the end is good. I mean, the park is beautiful, the boat ramps are nice. It's, but again, along the way, I think that there was just a lot of, I don't know, just, um, I, I, I get to come back saying, I think someone wasn't paying attention. Uh, watching all the, 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 the dots and the T's crossed and the dollars, and it just, I think, got out of, got out of hand. Um, but again, I think, I think there's been a lot of good decisions. I think our season in, in, in really decent shape. I think, um, you know, uh, from a good side, anyway. Um, I think there were some poor decisions, and that may stem around different things. But, uh, you know, I don't like to focus too much on the bad. Mm -hmm. You know, um, um, I can't, uh, it's hard to, to talk about the council, existing council, because, um, as we were talking just briefly before we started, is that it's hard to, to criticize them when you don't know the ins and outs of every single decision they made and every single conversation they had. Mm -hmm. uh, because, I mean, I watch a lot of council meetings and I attend a few when I can, but I haven't been every, every meeting in four years and, mm -hmm. and to know what conversation took place every time and how they came to their decisions. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes hard to judge people on that when you don't know. Yeah, those are fair so, points. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so many people do feel that it was a controversial term in Cerny's history, uh, specifically as you mentioned with staff and um, elected officials and the conflicts um, w amongst each other. And regardless of which side you're on, uh, many citizens have lost some trust in City Hall. So what do you think that you would have done during the conflict? And how do you think that you could deal with the loss of trust from some of the taxpayers? Well, I think as a, as a politician um, or as a person, no one wants to, to have, uh, have lost trust mm -hmm. from anybody. Mm -hmm. um, because trust is something that's really hard to recover from. Mm -hmm. As far as, as, as uh, how I would have dealt with things, I think my personality is just different than a lot of council people I see there. Um, and in, in what way? What do you I guess really, uh, I don't know, I, I, I find I'm, like I'm just very genuine and, and engaging and, and kind. And, um, and I think that I would never have got it, let it get to the point where it got. Um, it's not who I am. Um, they took it there for whatever reason they did. Again, not being involved and entrenched in all the things they were talking about. Right, yeah. It's hard to say. I just think my personality, um, I would not, from my point of view, ever let it get to where it got to. I think I um, would have approached things differently, would have stepped in sooner, would have said different things likely. Um, mm -hmm. I think I just, I'm different. Okay. So. Okay. Um, so this year is also the first year that Sarnia has moved to the internet voting. Yes. Uh, it's also the first year with no papers. So what are your thoughts on that? You know, this is, uh, uh, first of all, I, 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 I'm for internet voting. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's uh, it's the way um, that things are moving, both, uh, both in municipalities, across our province and in the province and in the country. However, um, you know, if you look at the demographic of our city, we have an older population, and, and, and if you look at the older population, some of them are really into tech stuff, and, and they'll be fine and won't have an issue. But the bulk of our older population doesn't like that. I mean, they don't carry cell phones, they don't worry about computers, but it was simple, and, and sometimes I wish we didn't do either. Yeah. So, so I think that there should have been more consultation with, with the, the people of our community. Again, I'm for it, but at the same time, um, our personal opinions on issues, how do you have to set those aside? We have to do what's right for our city. Right. So, and every city's different with this. So if we have a high demographic that doesn't want it, it probably shouldn't have done it. Mm -hmm. But we wouldn't have known that because there wasn't a lot of consultation. Right. It was just done. Right. So, yeah, I mean, I, I think, the one positive side, it may get more voters, mm -hmm. which we always look to have more voters, right? Mm -hmm. um, when you have a small percentage of your community deciding who is elected official, uh, that's not always good. Yeah. You want a higher number, and we right. don't traditionally have a great number. Mm -hmm. So it's 33% last, yeah. last election, yeah. You know, so that okay. number needs to be much higher, and maybe this way may be a way to do that. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, fair. Um, so you did mention that you thought it was a positive with what they've done um, for Mercer and General Hospital coming down. Yep, yep. Uh, so what would you like to see there in, in that area? Well, you know, I must admit I, 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 I'm guilty because I, I've actually seen what's going there. Oh, okay. Um, so um, to some degree there's some obviously homes being built, there's some office buildings, there's some parking. There's mm -hmm. The reason I've seen some of the plans is um, I'm on the board of directors for Habitat for Humanity. Oh, okay. So we were looking at some uh, possibly um, 
looking at um, acquiring some lands there mm -hmm. within that uh, that site For to, you build, guys to build, yeah, you know, right? to build some homes, right? right? So, uh, so I have seen a, a basic plan of the property. So, it's good. I think if I mean if they're they're going to re revitalize some existing buildings, they're going to have more parking, they're going to build some homes on the back side of that. Um, there's going to be more offices. I mean, it, it, to me, it's just it's great that it's being redeveloped. Um, you know, when, when land sits vacant or buildings sit vacant in neighborhoods, it, it brings crime. And, and when things are being developed and, and, and uh, you know, reused, and it can only help the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, further to that, I mean, I'd like to see that whole area, Mitten Street Village, and mm -hmm. go under revitalization. It's such a, you know, it's, a, um, it's a, been a huge part of our community for a lot of years. Going back when I was high school, it was very vibrant there. Yeah, it was a there was a lot. There was, yeah, there was a lot of businesses there. They were doing really well. There were people go, spending time in that area, and, and it, it hasn't uh, hasn't been like that for a number of years. So, I mean, I know that the general hospitals are far stretched from where Mitten Village is, but it's all that. It all connected. Right. So I think if it starts there, it can continue down. And, and so I think doing something with the site was really important. Okay. Uh, so now this section is just about what we can expect from you and the specifics sure. of your platform. Yeah. Uh, so in your opinion, three most important issues that Sarnia is facing as a city. Wow. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. So... Um, you could do more than three if you like. But. No, no, no. I think, first of all, I, I, I'm going to start with um, change Change is going to help change. So the reason I'm being that is we've had a, a tough four years with council. And I believe that the citizens of this community have lost confidence in the council and trust in the council. So we need to change the council, first and foremost. We have to have a new voice, a new set of eyes that can look through a different lens. Um, two, I think it, it's basic, I think, when you're running a community. Um, it's no different than if you're running a business. You've got to keep the finances in line. You've got to do the capital work that's necessary. And, and you got to make sure that you have the right services and resources for your community. Mm -hmm. um, so, someone said, you know, um, to me recently, um, people in Sarnia worry about five or four or five key things. And I said, well, I, I agree with the four or five you're saying, but I think it's much more than that. But they worry whether their snow is going to be cleared, uh, um, they're going to have water to drink, the fire is going to come if there's a fire, the police is going to come if there's a crime. You know, and I said, yeah, that's 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 good. Those are all the basic services that we need as a community. But, um, you know, can the fire and police come if our roads are falling apart? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And I and I know, you know, I, I said, um, you know, I think our roads are probably the worst I've seen them in, in in 20 years. And you know, people agree and don't agree always with that comment. But we're way behind on infrastructure, and I think it's no secret. You'll probably hear that from every single candidate you talk to. We are years behind, mm -hmm. and millions and millions of dollars behind. You know, if you look at, by the time we get to 2022, um, the infrastructure deficit, let's say, that we were behind is almost $400 million. Mm -hmm. So we have to find a better way um, to move that along at a faster rate. I'm not sure what quite the answer is that, whether you know we take out loans or um, we look at the capital plan again for infrastructure and see if there's ways to, to speed along or, or do things differently. So that's key. Um, um, I think we need to sort out the, the um, kerfuffle, let's say, that exists between, between the council and, and the, the city administration. Um, it's terrible for our city when, when we're in the state we are with our council and our administration. You, know, you have, they're not really getting along. Mm -hmm. You have key figures of our community that aren't talking. And you have, it's not good for our community. Right. Yeah. So to me, it change change will, will create change, and um, new council will create change, and, and you'll get new voices and new opinions and, and hopefully new ways to, to, to accomplish some of the things that the city needs to accomplish. Okay. Um, the population of Sarnia is shrinking. <laughs> uh, it's proving difficult to keep youth and young families. So how could we encourage them to stay? You know, I, I, I see that's part of my platform. Um, one of the things that have always bothered me for years is that people go to school here. Um, after high school, a lot of them leave and go to college. 
and they don't come back. Mm -hmm. You know, whether that's because there's not enough employment, whether they don't have the right services they want. Um, I'm not quite sure what it is, um, but they are leaving. Mm -hmm. And I think they eventually come back, but they come back when they're much older. Mm -hmm. But you're right, we need a, a more inclusive community that is, 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 has um, people from all age groups. I think what, what I find with the, the younger younger folks, let's say, that 20 to 30 demographic, certainly doesn't offer a lot of the things that they want. Yeah, do you feel they have a voice and a, and a well, real reason to stay? Well, I don't know if they have a voice. I mean, because, again, uh, younger people tend to avoid politics. But, but I mean, our community, like, as a 20-year-old, 20, 20 when I was around, I wanted to be able to hang out with my friends. I wanted a great place to eat and hang out. I wanted to... Honestly, it sounds funny, but I want to go to a club or a bar where I can see my friends and have a good time. Um, and certainly lacks all of that. Mm -hmm. Now, there obviously some of it, some of it's coming back from a perspective of downtown core. We've seen a huge, huge increase in, in, in what's going on down there with that type of um, situation. A lot of cool, um, trendy restaurants and places you can hear music. I don't know if I go back to my my 30s and early 40s. You could go anywhere in this town and hear music. You can't hear that very rarely anymore. You can't go find music. It's very rare. There's a few places, but you could find music anywhere. So there's all these different things that we uh, that people want as a younger individual. Mm -hmm. We have a good community to raise your family. We have reasonable, reasonable um, housing market. I would say from, uh, and that's that's obviously getting a bit out of control too with the price of housing. Right, yeah. And of course, I'm a housing guy, so affordable housing is a key issue for me. So the rents are increasing. So um, we've got to find a way to bring that down to keep younger people here too. Um, I, I just think offering different things that we don't offer uh, in the form of entertainment, jobs, housing. Um, I think that's... That's fair too. Most most people in their twenties, that is their concern. A big concern is their social and entertainment life in whatever well, city they're if in. If you if you look at if you look at our, our younger individuals today, um, there was a day um, even probably before my generation, people would get married when they're twenty five. Mm -hmm. People get married when they're twenty five anymore. They get yeah. married when they're thirty five. Right. You know, mm -hmm. thirty thirty five. So between that twenty and thirty year age, you're right. They want the social. Mm -hmm. You know uh, the social aspect of, of life uh, where they can hang with your friends have a good time mm -hmm. they're working they're supporting themselves but yeah they're not they're not ready to buy a house right right you know um, so we need to offer that here and with our waterfront and um, our location we should be able to draw that both from a business aspect and from a population aspect we should be able to keep them here yeah there's there's a lot of potential there for sure right. Okay, um, so last election, we spoke a bit about this too, 33% um, voter turnout. Mm -hmm. um, so what do you think, do you have any ideas that we could increase the engagement between the people and their government in Sanya? I think that, I, I think this has been a problem anywhere, not just in our community, it's a problem in, in, in the province, it's in the country. If you look at the voter turnout provincially and federally, mm -hmm. they're low. Mm -hmm. um, there's a good, good portion of people that are just, um, cut off from politics, don't want to hear it, um, don't want to be involved in it, don't care who sits in it, you know, um, they want to live their life, not worry about it. Um, as far as engaging more people and, and, and getting people more interested in politics, the engagement part of the voter turnout, I think one way is internet voting, right? Uh, people can sit at home, they don't have to go fight any crowds, deal with all that process and, and a lot of it I've found over the years is is people don't want to deal with that. They don't want to worry about the crowds, they want to stand in line. You know, if they're if they're not on the voter list then there's a process that takes longer for them to be there. You know, they gotta to go to a polling station. They don't want to do that. So that I think has, has hurt voter turnout in many areas. Um, and I think our community's been affected by that. You know I think that this community and communities across the province um, do a great job at, at, at advertising, giving all the communities the information to vote. Uh, it's just a desire whether you do or you don't want to. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, fighting apathy, how can you fight that? Yeah, and you know, I think we might have more turnout this year uh, for two obvious reasons. I think, again, uh, this last four years has maybe not been the best, uh, or at least in the eyes of the citizen, it hasn't been the best. And we might see increase with the voting. So 
know, those two, but at the end of the day, you know, I think uh, I mean, realistic goal, I think, to get voter turnout, if we got 50% of our, 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 our total for our community, that would be a good number. Mm -hmm. be a know, jump. Yeah, it'd be yeah. a big jump. Yeah, I don't see us getting there, uh, you know, which, uh, this election, but I could see us easily increasing by 10 or 12%. I really can. I guess we'll see in October. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, why should I vote for you? Why should you vote for me? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think uh, one of the things you'll get from me is a genuine guy of good moral compass, who's kind, who's humble, who just wants to do what's best for his community. Um, I work hard, and I'll work hard for, for the citizens of this community if I am elected. You'll get what you see. I mean, um, I'm a straight shooter. Yeah. Um, and again, you'll get a lot of effort from me. Um, you'll get engagement from me. I'll be, as I like to say, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna be a big voice for the people. Great. Okay. Uh, so that's it for my questions. Is there any other thoughts or any other messages that you would like to tell the people of Sarnia? No, just uh, I mean one of the things that we just talked about. Come out and vote. Um, it's key. Uh, your voice needs to be heard, and and we want more people um, people to decide who's gonna sit in these chairs for you. So just come out and vote. Uh, you know, look at everybody's platform and, and make the best decision that you think. All right. That's all you can ask for. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thanks, Katie. Thank you. All right, guys, that is it for today. Again, that was David Waters running in the 2018 Sarny Municipal Election. If you liked what Dave had to say, you can vote for him between October 11th through to October 22nd. The main thing is try to inform yourself as much as you possibly can on as many candidates as you can. Uh, get out there and vote. Thanks again for watching. Share this project. This is Into the City. I'm Katie Horvath.